in today's video we're going to be taking a look here at a potential tropical cyclone across the southern caribbean perhaps off the southeast coast or into the gulf of mexico this one is continuing to increase in concern in my opinion we've seen this one kind of increase in odds over time and we're going to be taking a pretty big deep dive into this also some pretty high precipitation cold fronts that will also bring some cooler weather with them also so some interesting things to discuss as well as some more major storms around the nation than we have been seeing uh in recent weeks or even months so a whole lot of exciting stuff to discuss today Let's take a look at it, and first things first, our European Ensemble model, which really for the past few days has not been on board. We are starting to see this one start to show some uh, tropical systems develop in here, uh, perhaps heading towards uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti, or maybe towards more Jamaica area. We're seeing a lot of these models become on board. This is the Ensemble model, but it's also the spaghetti plot, so we're getting each individual member of this model's Ensemble family. So there's usually like 20 to 30 as we take a look here at the GFS model, this is through hours 120, so we see it kind of originate here near Central America. As we move towards day six, that was day five, this is day six, we see some of them starting to move northward, mostly towards Jamaica, some are a little bit further eastward. As we take a look at day seven here, what we're going to see is that we get quite a few beginning to curve towards the west over Cuba. Uh, we do have some heading more directly northward towards Jamaica and eastern Cuba, maybe towards the Bahamas. That's kind of the spread that we see now. As we head towards day eight, this is the look. And all of a sudden, we have a lot more of them heading towards southern Florida or perhaps into the Gulf. We also have plenty of them trying to move this into the Bahamas. This is much further west than we saw yesterday. And yesterday's model runs, we saw kind of what I'm drawing here in the yellow. A lot more of them were out to sea like this. We're going to see that most of these model members are going to be to the west of that track from yesterday. Day 9 right here. We start to get a really big spread, but we're seeing a lot of these in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And also a lot of these right off the southeast coast, which is a really bad look. You know, this is going to put uh, this Gulf Coast and also this southeast coast on high alert for potential tropical impacts just about a week up to 10 days from now. And if I was to draw a cone, this is the 10 day mark. It's something like this is what we're seeing. So it's obviously very wide, but a lot of these moving again into the Gulf, plenty of these moving in between towards Florida. And we get a lot of them moving towards uh, the Southeast here. And that's the general flow on the majority of these models. Here's day 11 and we start to see that um, some of these do stay out to sea. They're a lot closer to the East Coast than we've seen yesterday or the day before. And a lot of these that are in the Gulf would likely curve back eastward towards maybe the Florida Panhandle, if not Louisiana, Mississippi, or Alabama coast, something along those lines. And finally, here's day 12. We kind of finish things up. And we do see that a lot of these would bring United States impacts. A lot of these in here where it tends to kind of do like this uh, but we also have a pretty large group that are out to sea as well which would be very very good news we do have one that would take it towards kind of the outer banks and up into the mid-atlantic this would be a very impactful track for these areas as well let's take a look here at the european model and as we move towards tomorrow afternoon what we see is a cold front arrives we have this large ridge out west large trough in the east it's a little flat but it is taking up a lot of area um and overall, where we have this dippage going on, I know I'm probably like a broken record for those of you that watch daily, but we've been talking about this for a few days, but where you see these dips is where we're seeing unseasonably cold temperatures and where we see a lot of these kind of bumps like this is where we're seeing the unseasonably warm temperatures out west. We also have plenty of snowfall happening across eastern Canada and also the immediate western areas of Canada as well. We're seeing some snowfall up there as more Arctic air is moving into those areas. We do have some storminess for the Pacific Northwest and also for areas across some of the deeper south in here like Arkansas, Tennessee, into North Carolina perhaps. Nothing too major at that point though. By the time we reach Sunday here on October 27th, we still see the dips here over the east. So again, cooler temperatures overall taking place there. And we still see rather large bumps taking place here 
over much of the West. For the Northwest, as well as the Southwest of Canada, we are seeing a lot of precipitation here due to a 991 Alberta low that is located there just to the east of the Canadian Rockies. Speaking of the Canadian Rockies, we are seeing heavy snowfall also for the Canadian Cascades here. These two mountain ranges definitely uh, receiving multiple inches, if not a foot or two of snowfall from just this system. So a whole lot coming down. By the time we reach Monday afternoon on October 28th, things begin to change as we have this trough building due to that storminess for the West Coast. A ridge for the central states and still a smaller trough for the east, but that is coming to an end over time. Again, this one's a lot more significant, this trough over the west. And overall, that main ridge is over the central states here. Now, the storminess has expanded for the west, especially the mountainous west. We're seeing some snowfall taking place across the three major mountain ranges, Cascade, Sierra Nevada, and the northern Rockies there. We do have a stronger low here over central Canada. We will watch this for a potential cold front. Let's see what happens by the time we reach Tuesday. And we don't really see that one take off with a cold front. However, we do see a lot of energy transferring to the south to a pretty strong low that's over Wisconsin. We begin to get a warm front look out ahead of that one and maybe a dragging cold front look underneath, which could begin to bring this cooler air eastward over time. We do see that uh, there is another low as well there for eastern Colorado, and this is bringing heavy Rocky Mountain snowfall by the time we're reaching the Tuesday time frame. Let's take a look at Wednesday, and by the time we reach Wednesday, October 30th, this low weakens, but it is south of the Hudson Bay. It does have a dragon cold front, although there is a lot of high pressure and a lot of warmth surging up the west coast, and I wonder how easy of a time this cold is going to have kind of moving in to these areas simultaneously. Uh, I suspect that it's going to have a very hard time. This cold front is very high precipitation, so we see heavy showers and even thunderstorms taking place along that boundary. Let's take a look here at Thursday on October 31st. And again, this frontal boundary is basically from Mexico to Canada here. Very, very far stretching and impacting many different states. We do see a trough and storm system moving on shore to the northwest, which will uh, basically, over time, warm things up in the east once again. Our trough is centered here, this initial trough that moved in from the west, and we have another one building here with warmer air, really, really thin, but in between. The most warm air is up the east coast still by this point. Heavy snowfall again for the northern Rockies and Cascades there. That's Thursday on Halloween. Uh, Friday on November 1st, we do see plenty of rainfall taking place in a lot of the eastern states. It's hard to even say that because it's been months since I've even said it. But we do see activity on kind of the upswing as we've been talking about for many days now. As we take a look out west, look at this. Snowfall for the Canadian Cascades, Northern Rockies especially here. So very, very snowy in the upcoming week for them. Let's take a look at Saturday on the 2nd of November. And again, snowfall for the Northern Rockies here. Some showers across the upper Midwest and Great Lakes. And then across the deeper south central states, even extending up into the Ohio Valley, we also have quite a bit of showers happening in that area as well. Sunday on the 3rd of November here, we continue to see this, although it's moving into the mid-Atlantic now as well. So much needed rainfall for many folks for the very beginning of November time frame. A lot of this snowfall is dipping down into the Colorado and Utah area. As we do have a ridge building in the west again, this trough is on the move eastward, and I wonder if this warm-up will finally move offshore and allow the cold air to move back in. That could be the upcoming flow of things. For Monday on the 4th, it does appear like there's a lot of precipitation still taking place across most of the south-central and eastern states. Although this ridge, we see a lot of high pressure in here out west. We see these couple of areas of centers, and then also a lot of warmer temperatures here building. This should force the cold air down and eastward for that first week of November. So more major cooldowns appear to be on the way on the horizon. As we take a look at the total precipitation, we are seeing drastically increasing amounts over a lot of the eastern states, especially the pockets that are blue, yellow, red, or even brown. We do see the Pacific Northwest seeing the same thing. And the Rockies, upper Midwest, seeing decent amounts as well. So many different areas seeing quite a bit. And sure enough, as we take a look, we're far above average here for this kind of stretch of the south, central, and eastern states. The Rockies into the upper Midwest, we're seeing decent amounts through here. And then also, we're seeing the Pacific Northwest dealing with 
up to an inch or two above average over the next 10 days, which for them is a whole lot because they already begin to experience a lot here in the late fall. So that means a whole lot of precipitation is expected from them. Total snowfall, we do see a few inches perhaps for the mountainous northeast there. Also for kind of the upper Midwest, more specifically just northern Minnesota, we do see some flakes or maybe upwards of an inch or two. And then for the mountainous West, we are seeing mostly feet of snowfall. The pinks being about a foot, the blues being about two to three feet, those uh, pastel blues within the pinks. Those outer blues are a few inches, but the inner kind of more pastel blues will be in the multiple feet range. Uh, grays are dusting, if anything, purples are six to ten. You get the gist, you can find your area, but a whole lot of mountainous snowfalls expected out west is the main point here to drive home. Now, the temperature pattern for the European model here, we do see the east coast is dealing with cooler conditions still. Pacific, northwest, into some of the Rockies, and even for western Canada, we're seeing cooler temperatures. And the main area experiencing the warmth is going to be the central states and the southwest states, where we see this kind of northerly flow with those warmer winds. Over time, we do see another cold front move into the east. This is tomorrow on Saturday the 26th. Here is Sunday on the 27th. So the mid-Atlantic and northeast are cool once again. Even Monday the 28th, we're seeing that. And by Tuesday the 29th, we do see it warm up in the east again. This is when we get this really strong ridge for the central states dealing with far above normal temperatures. And then much cooler across most of the west. So a negative PNA pattern is really the majority here. Now, as we move towards November 1st, we do get our first little cold front here. This is Friday the 1st, Saturday the 2nd. It does move up into the northeast, but we see the warmth kind of retake over. Although, look at this. We see warmth building for the west coast here by the fourth time frame. Colder air is beginning to move eastward. We'll have to see if it can beat out this ridge and basically kick it out the, the back door. We'll see what happens. GFS model, a little bit more range here we get. So here is, uh, again, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday there. So we get that uh, few-day cooldown for the east. Big warm-up followed by another cooldown here for the first, second, third, fourth, fifth warm-up again. But look at this, more cold air on the way as we approach the 10th. So multiple cooldowns, multiple warm-ups. It's a flip-flop pattern here for the next week or two. Definitely going to be interesting as you know, summer is basically battling winter at this point, And for the most part, winter is going to win the majority of times once we reach into November. So we're in an interesting transitionary period. It's going to be fun to watch. I do upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe. We're going to keep you guys up to date with all of these temperature patterns, storms, and even tropical concerns. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.